anything at this point. I'm just happy to have Dilar here. A few seconds before we get back into the draft. Ladies and gentlemen, quick reminder, it's up to Evos now. They choose which side they want to be on as we go into the game to proper. Akumbong Atlas for pulling us up into the scene. Finally, we see Evos going over the red side. I love the Atlas, by the way. He really helps everyone out. Anyways, going into the draft, Onik first pick, Evos like his second pick. Novaria banned out by Evos, but Onik has the first pick, betting out the Claude as well as the Eve. For now, it looks like they're trying to make sure that just the comfort heroes aren't being given away by Evos. Personally, for me, I'm really liking the, the, the Claude ban. Yeah, it's a brand special, and especially because Onik really likes some somewhere outside of uh, Eve. They, they really like. Uh, Valentina, so that they ban out the clubs, so just they will open up the draft so much for their squad. I would assume that Onik might feel. prioritize. Uh, My team is there. Actually, Valentina should be the priority here for Onik, but it will be banned out so easily. I mean, okay, G, whatever. Help out Evos, why don't what? you? So, yeah, e uh, sorry. Valentina hasn't been banned out. Mm. For now, again, we're looking at the Joy. I'm not so sure yep. uh, whether Delari can play the Joy now. And speaking of which, hashtag C, the Thorns heroes, remain. half of MLBB's wow. hero pool has been used That's surprising. in MSC 2023 with 60 left to complete the current roster. Now, gentlemen, this does not show that this meta is as balanced as it could be. I love it. This is amazing. Especially given the fact that heroes like Masha are coming through. And this just shows that we're going through the best of the best. The yeah. Hall of Fame. The Hall of Legends, if you will, Ooh. for the meta games across time and space. But now something else to note. Even with the 60 heroes left, almost half of MLB's hero pool used, why is mid still so tight? Why is, does it yeah. seem like there's only so many mid heroes that are viable? <laughs> Yeah. To the point where you even see fighters in the mid. Domain. The answer is really just settle for what works. It's really, you know, that's a. That's four mid laners banned. Exactly. So, with that, do you go our. Uh, Joy is open, by the way, as well as 1 1. What do you pick, Onik? There's so much. This is a shopping spree, but you only can pick one. Joy? Kaja? Kaja? I always want to see the Joy. Knowing Onik, they will pick up 1 1. To me. Wow. Because 1 1 is open. Wow. But wait. Kaja, he's open as well. Kaja Joy. Kaja Joy or... Yeah. Ah. Kaja Joy, nope. I think the Kaja will take priority, right? Since yeah. that is probably the only one I can really deal with a 1-1. Obvious though. You pick Kaja Joy uh, here. I mean, yeah. I mean, the Lar is in play. Phobius, it so could it's... legit be absolutely anything. It's spicy. Uh, could be Phobius, could be uh, the Joy. Yep. They're in a rush. I think Kaja... Uh, knowing... Evos, they. Uh, I mean, knowing the they might be the last thing. Kaja, 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 Kaja. Oh, fire. <laughs> I mean, the Eve is not there anymore. The Valentina isn't there as well. So this Fairy is looking pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. You're pretty good. You are pretty good. Yeah, thanks. Okay, get a room. Mm. Speaking of rooms, Onik, what kind of room are they trying to create here? Because going up against Kaja as well as the Fairy quite a lot of engage. Yep. How are they going to make sure that this 1-1 one -one will be able to get good stacks? Yeah, a room where you protect the... the you allow for the 1-1 one -one to have stacks. So you have a frontliner, Frederick, for example. Or, or maybe one -one to have what? A room where you have... Uh, a room for the 1-1. One -one. To have stacks. 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 Oh, stacks. stacks. Yes. stacks. To block okay. the weak ass point. Right, 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 right. Perfect, perfect, so, perfect. Fredrin or Akai, I would say. And then, of course, uh, the hey, Joy is there. Oh, Farsa. Farsa. Oh, Farsa. Wait, isn't that like... Okay. She's, okay, here's the thing. not as hot right now. 0% win rate. Yep. Mm -hmm. and it There's the Fredrin, as expected. You can still settle for a carry here if you're Evos. No, I mean, like, looking at the situation, there's already quite a lot of dive, right? Delari could be using something like a Yuzong Sorry. as well. Are they trying to bait it out? Are they trying to force they are. Delari? Absolutely. Yep. The dragon is Absolutely. so good here. They're trying to force right? Delari. Yep. I mean, looking at the fact that it is a Vasa, yes, I absolutely agree. It seems like a Yuzong makes perfect sense in this yep. case. Wait, Onyx has I mean, Onyx hasn't really shown who their ESP laner yep. is, how that movement and how the lane priority would be like. But regardless, we're still looking at the Fredrin. We're still yep. looking at the fact that Fredrin can still flex into the ESP. I think this is just Joy or Carry as the third pick for Evo. Instead of you We talked about oh, it! Yep. Yeah. We mentioned it before the game started! 
Let's this, go, the Lord. Let's this go. Is, this is all reliable. Oh. This is all reliable. Oh my God. Much the way. The much the way. Oh my Venus is Estes and Carl Dizzy is Lancelot. No. The Lar is Uranus. Exactly. The Lar is what? Uranus. Uranus. God. The Lar is Uranus. And uh, I'm standing now because I'm so happy about this. This okay, is a fine. classic. I'll as well. All right. I'm happy too. So you ban out carry here if you are Agreed. Evos. Or maybe... Hey, you can pick it up after. You can pick it up after. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking actually Lapu Lapu as a ban for Evos. It's it's still good versus Faramis type of compositions. And it's uh, it's your it's the way for you to kind of have a front line to, uh, fend, off, to, to fend off the Faramis uh, cult altar. As well mm -hmm. as the fact that you allow for your... Why do I want to get the stacks? Honestly, I like the ban on to Franco right now. I kind of feel like, yeah, just, just just go with the, the Roamer ban. Any kind of Roamer that could give a problem towards the Kaja as well would be pretty good because I'm also thinking, right. like, when I'm playing the, 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 the Kaja, it's very annoying going up against something like the Atlas yep. where you could you could pull me up when yep. I want to pull you down. Yep. Yeah, I know. Okay, I can't, no, I'm I can't, not going to explain You don't have to explain yeah, I'm, I'm not going to explain it. Yeah, no. Okay, the, the only problem I have with this Uranus, uh, unfortunately, is that it was per, pick, pick third. And Kochev just knows how to deal with this. Uh, Raja, right. Raja Yeba. Yeah. Raja Langit Yeba. Did you know that Kochev cannot step on land anymore? <laughs> don't have Raja Langit. That's why he was carried on. MPL ID. Mm. His shoes are Very far too back. expensive. Yeah, that's right. No, Very have you back. ever seen him walk on nope. stage? No. Nope. Nope. Whenever camera pans over, I never see him walk in general. He's just there. He's yep. hovering. People don't know he's been hovering all the time. That's right. Or um, that's true. Or he's being carried uh, by his teammates by, or someone else. I've carried him. That's MPL right. MPL Philippines season right. eleven playoffs. What? Sir, what a privilege. That's What's canon. That's canon. Yeah. Looking at the final uh, bands here. The Dyroth closed up, and oh, of yeah, course the, the Fanny taken away. Carry, I, I'm, I think. I'm thinking of Carry, and then after yep. that, Tickle Ling. It's I pretty good against mm -hmm. against this composition, no? That's Carry uh, first, Ling that's later. That's true. What's, but, what's I, scary about the Ling, though, is uh, if, if the Fred Ring goes to the jungle, yeah. it's not as easy. That, I think that's you, one point. Yeah, you might just last pick up Artis here. I, 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 I do agree with the Ling also, actually, to be honest. Here. Because they will want to probably look at the second insurance on really dealing with the Fasa, right? Fasa yeah. is that, that large artillery would be one of the big ways that Evos can't even get close to yep. the opponents. Get closing. Yep. Lapu Lapu is so good here for Onik. And then uh, th there is that that route where you go for uh, some some sort of a lockdown to go with your with your one one so that you have a frontliner. So maybe something like an Atlas, perhaps with the absence of the Franco, you need that hard lockdown. Um, some something along the lines of like is a Lolita bad? Judgment. Lolita maybe. Something single target, you know? With a, a single bonk. Saber. Something, no, not Saber. Maybe a Cho. Yep. Oh, Kofra. There you go. Oh. Sound. All right, Kofra being it's very key, solid here. It's a keyboard classic. Oh. Looking at draft now, I was thinking about Artis. the the link, but yeah, now with the Kofra there. Not uh, exactly viable anymore. Is a it? little bit difficult, yeah. A little bit difficult. But again. But they're kind of lacking damage, isn't it? From the side of Evos. I would say early, mid, honestly, once the uh, Fragments has the clock as well as the lightning, it hurts quite a lot. The moment has the Divine Glaive, uh, you could basically almost one-shot the entire team, especially if the team clumps up together. Mm -hmm. Trust me, yep. I play a lot of Fragments. Yep, maybe the finishing touch is the Martis, so you go for the Decimate, you guarantee a kill. Oh yeah, to true. Chain together. Oh. And you win against the Fredrin, you win against if the it Fredrin. is a jungle Fredrin. Alright, this mean, is a oh. joy, you're correct. Or maybe... I I should go back to the battle, perhaps. <laughs> Martis. Okay. Um, so far, we looked at both teams' drafts. Uh, are we going to be slightly biased with the large Uranus here? Absolutely. Absolutely? But, yeah, yeah, all right. Slightly. All right, Evo's then. It costs nothing. It costs nothing. Yeah. Again, game one, we also preferred Evo's draft, right? Yeah, it true. Just the execution. Came to, came to difference in the execution and, of course, timing. Yep. There I say, there I say I don't favor Evo's lineup, but this is... This is the Lars Uranus. Just dog. for, just for. Yep. Right? To be honest, I, just, I, I, I do like Evo's lineup. Okay. I do want to see Evo's oh, being able to pull this off. Uh, I believe our camera did stutter a bit there, which made it seem like Yeb was walking, but... He was hovering. Can confirm, <laughs> just, he was hovering. I see it that was a stop from, video. Yeah, I see him straight from uh, where I am now. Definitely was hovering. That was from a couple of years yeah, back, it was folks. a stop video. Again, this is a historic matchup as is. 
Let's go into game number two and make more history in this best of five. Gentlemen. Going into game number two, we see Delar finally coming in, but will he be enough to drop down the Sky Kings? Onyx down to the bottom. In fact, we're gonna see the bird fly a little bit longer. This is basically Yep just now. Yeah. Just hovering there on the base. Uh, they're fixing some tech issues because Yep's uh Yep's foot deck. Uh, I, I kind of feel like that took everyone by surprise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Oh, okay. So now looking looking back at the the draft, I'm just uh, I'm just thinking like this joy. Although it is a uh, still a good game for the joy because of the presence of the Beatrix that can go to the back lines. This is not going to be the typical joy that can easily go up against Marksman because now you have the Kaja. Yeah. Traditionally a good counter, or if not an answer Ooh. to the joy because you just lock him down, right? And you have the damage output and you have a killing blow. So um, it's still, I think the 1-1 is still a problem, although they have the Fermis yeah. for the Cult Altar. But right now, honestly, looking at the Marshall, Four Fingers has been shown mm -hmm. and Four Fingers usually hurt. So this will take a while. Okay, so you guys were talking about a 1-1. I <laughs> we you, you yeah, one one. yeah what about the one one about one one right yeah, yeah, one we're one. talking about a one one right so uh, one one used to be you know four snacks now it's three yeah, so three. at least it's a little bit easier for one one to you know proc and, proc and go on to the to the ultimate but okay the main question that I ask or that I want to ask is the fact that yes there is a Ferramis and yes there is a Kaja they have a catch onto the one one and they have an insurance policy with the Ferramis so what is really going to be one of the biggest problems for Evos right now because I as as a team in Evos if I have this composition I don't think that I will be afraid of one one at all. Yeah, you're not afraid of the one one. You're also not afraid of the joy. But be, but having both one one and joy together, you might not have enough resources to lock down those two heroes. Oh, right. Maybe you can only pick one. So that's so the only. So you pick which one one? Which one one? Yeah. Oh. Which one For you one, to be able to one. get to one one. Oh. oh. But yeah, that's uh, the looming problem here for Evo. Surely they have the tools to go out those heroes individually, but together they might need to pick their fights. And that, that's a difficult choice to make because it's between Boots and Chewe. So it's a very difficult dilemma. But then again, like I said, they do have the tools. I see where you're going with here because again, you have the answer, but you probably have the answer for one person only. Yeah. Now, I kind of feel like the answer will be much easier if one of the lanes is one. Yeah. Right? If the Uranus was able to deal with the Joy, then the Joy won't be that big of a problem later, right? So you can use uh, all your resources to make sure that the 1-1 one, one, uh, comes down. But mm -hmm. if, if the 1-1 one, one doesn't see much trouble, then yeah, you can, you can focus on the Joy. If neither of them are much of a trouble, then you know, do, do whatever you want. So how's it gonna be the matchup of Joy versus, uh, versus Uranus? Specifically, if we are looking at the uh, La onto this Uranus, yep. because I really want to know what kind of matchup I would want to, uh, what kind of matchup this is going to be like. Honestly, it's gonna be surprising because the Uranus after the the buff on the damage. What what what, what <laughs> do you see? That? What do you say? The Lar, check this out. Oh, the Lar, check this out. Anyways, yeah. okay. So the Uranus, the first kill has been buffed in terms of the damage. We can hear the crowd cheer. <laughs> That's okay. so charismatic, dude. Taz yeah. knows that how to play. That is so charismatic. Taz yep. knows how to play with the camera, but again. <laughs> oh, acting like he's crying the whole point that I got to play here. Yeah. When am I going to put, you know what, I'm just going to say it. Uranus will be doing pretty good. Okay. That's, that's the end all. That's, that's, that's the only thing just I want to say. one all end all. And yeah. the, joy, the Joy does quite a lot of damage as well, but right. level one, you can cut the lane. As long yep. as the Joy gets hit by the uh, Ionic Edge, mm -hmm. yeah. Uranus will eventually win now. But I don't think the Joy will let the Uranus get the Ionic Edge stacks onto the Joy. Difficult to think. Yeah, um, yeah honestly, it is difficult to think. I guess. Uh, I guess the real, real. It's a skill matchup. Then let's make it easier. Skill yeah, matchup. Fifty-fifty. 50. Really let's just put it Skill matchup. Matchup. Yeah. But on the other hand, if we're looking at the other lanes, right? Faramis does clear faster than Farsa uh, at level uh, level one. So generally speaking, if they do want to put a little bit more pressure on over to the side of Beatrix lane, since it is. Beatrix versus 1-1. One, one. I'm expecting that Beatrix should be pretty much A-OK -okay onto 1-1 one, one, and they would probably want to get a little bit more of that turret plating off yeah. of 1-1's one, turret. Which, now, now that you say that, the note said that it's uh, Kaja plus the Fermis, so that's even faster. You have the, right. you yep. have the clear already, mm -hmm. clear speed is there, and you can rotate to lanes much faster. 
And it's like uh, if you compare that to Farsa and Kufra, that of course will pale in comparison. So you only have to be careful about the initiations that will come from El Keyboy. That being said, Dreams and Hijome, they need to be active this game. They have to make sure that the first two picks, the Kaja plus the Faramis, will count. Honestly, right now, I'm, I'm actually quite interested in the in the Farsa because, again, Farsa so far hasn't been doing too well. Mm -hmm. uh, still has the damage, but here's the thing. Initially, when I saw the nerf on the Wings by Wings, sure, adding a few extra seconds, making it so that you can't really spam your force skill all the time, I thought it wasn't that big of a deal, but apparently, it's pretty annoying not being able to fly away from difficult situations. So now, Onik, Philippine, Reunion, Kochieb, Kairi, and the Lard meet once yep. again in the international stage. However, on different sides this time. <laughs> this time, uh, this is adorable. These two, yeah, they, they are adorable. These two. at this point, I don't think it's Evos fans. I think they're all just the Lard fans. No, yeah, really? Maybe. Uh, Dillar has I'm his own. Uh, now, yeah, yeah. You haven't even seen him play. No, it doesn't really matter. He's yeah. charismatic. Yeah. Yep. Riz. Riz. General but, of oh, the Riz though. army. The Kyrie though. Kyrie, yeah. Even he's the handsome devil. Yeah, handsome. But handsome devil is Diablo. The handsome devil is Diablo. So yeah. All right. That's uh, Raja Yeba, Raja Langit. You're seeing together with uh, Coach. Uh, he's barely sitting, Annie. by the way. He's what? He's barely sitting. Like. Like yeah, his feet is hovering exactly. above the ground. Exactly. And if they, and if he does need to kind of get his feet on the ground, they make sure that the the ground is like a there's a carpet that has been dry cleaned. The upholstery is great. It's premium. You know, he only steps on premium ground. You know, I just why I don't even know how to follow that up. Yeah, you know, there's no follow up. It's I mean, a fact. It's something that we have to experience first, then we can really say something. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> what was that? I'm glad that the way that they're buying time for us just keep showing Galar over and over again. Yeah. Like, it, it, this is the effect. The moment One scene, comes, then go back to no, Galar. Imagine being, being the Lar. All right. After, yeah. like, what? A year plus I haven't played? Now I'm going to play? Yeah. Goes in the game. Pause. Yeah. What an effect, man. What, what an effect. Yeah. Immediately making, uh, making a lot of waves. I wonder what they're... Trying to do what? I wonder what they're trying to fix here. I it's forgot for the fourth one. I, I think I know okay, the fact what? that he is here. Yeah. His presence itself yeah. broke the game. Ah, I agree. Let's see it's here. It's just his story. Uh, I, I keep forgetting, but but number four has has a lot of uh, things under it. But yeah, it would take a little bit of while right now. The troubleshooting does say uh, around more or less two minutes, maybe just a little bit more than that. For now, we can see the crowd. They're all really enjoying themselves. Yeah. Boots. Okay. Revamp! A Boots revamp? Okay. Oh, him! He oh, the guy oh. next to the guy is the revamp Yeah. Boots. Does look like it. Yeah, he does. It looks the part. Looks the I part. wonder if he actually does. Is that redrafting? Huh. Oh. I have good ears, so you know. You have good ears? You yeah. can hear from the you can hear from what? the stage? Look, okay, let's not let's not leak this out, okay? I'm okay. just I don't know, I'm just something whispering in my ears like, is it a redraft? I don't know. Maybe not, maybe not, you know. Are you their devil? <laughs> no, I no. think he is that good. Yeah. No, 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 no. We have all Koi Moi Mao. Okay. Koi Moi Mao basically means everyone cheer. Ah. Yeah. You're not only good at cheering, you're also good at understanding. Oh, oh yeah. No, honestly, it's weird. Sometimes I hear people talking like, oh yeah, I roughly, I roughly know what you're talking about. Now we're gonna yeah. look at both Kyrie oh. and Delar face off. <laughs> Who is more handsome, Kyrie or Delar? Starting from cast your vote. St starting Delar. from Wolf. Starting I'm Delar. From, okay, Wolf. Delar. Can I? Can I? Can I get a Can I abstain? Yeah. Can I abstain here? Nope. 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 This, this is not the one both where you can either are your check. kids. Oh, oh man. You can. It's so difficult. They're both my boys, you know? They're both Filipinos that went to Indo. And both from Monik. Yeah, they're both your boys. They both respect you. Now you gotta make a choice. Who is I, your I'll favorite just, son? Just kill me, you know? No. <laughs> we have to be specific here. Who is the most handsome? Because if, we just are, kill if, me. if you're nitpicking on the term yeah. handsome, I know Somebody just shoot me now, you know? Uh. You know what? That, is, that, is, that, that? That, that is probably my, the answer of a, of a parent, yeah. My okay. answer for the most handsome would be Kyrie. Oh, okay. okay. The, but the cutest one, of course, would be the love. Okay. You know what? I don't know the difference between cute and handsome, so... Uh. <laughs> You're cute. Oh, you're, you're handsome. handsome. Hey, hey, hey right. <laughs> right. Yo, we got coffee. him. Got him. Now, looking at the screen, it looks like they're they're touching 
the screen just a little bit. So I think they're, I think we're about to go into the game. Yeah, but we are, we are going to be waiting for the head marshal's instructions to go on with the game, and we haven't seen that just yet. Yeah, but right now we're seeing the them. chop. It's called the chop. The it's chop. The chop. Yeah, the karate yeah, the chop. The exactly. onion chop. He's waiting. You know, the head marshal is just there, waiting, preparing for the right time. He seems like he's, uh, you know, almost ready. Or maybe they're oh, just. I, I think the you paint. were right about the redraft. Or maybe the, we're the just looking at the. We're just looking at Tyree and Dillard at this point. Yeah, they're the pink test. The game oh, does yeah. not matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? Oh, oh we're we're no going chop! The game. No chop! No chop! No chop, and we're in the game. Speaking of which, Evos has seven K gold lead. Nah, there's, there's, there's something wrong here. The game just started. The, the game, game just started. started. That was the previous game. That yeah, is how, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, this is how strong the law is, you know? His presence alone is more than enough to break the entire statistics of the game and the economy so and numbers. Funny. No, imagine the buff that you have. The moment you go into a game, you immediately get a 7k gold lead. That's, that's the buff I want. That's, that is the true meaning of buff. That's the true meaning of buff. Is, is this the time where we focus on Delar just, you know? Are they just leaving the lane? I think this is going to be a really good uh, idea for me to really realize and understand between Boots and Dela, between Joy as well as this Uranus, how is the free lane priority going to be like? Will Joy even want to stick himself out and stick his neck out and try to go for trades on health while trying to bring down the waves? Honestly, it is worth it. But the thing is, Delar just keeps on healing up, especially he's yeah. using the uh, crab there exactly. to make sure that he he keeps the 20 stacks. Yep. And of course, in the meantime, in the middle lane, we do have Keyboy as well as Kyrie jumping onto Dreams. It didn't really quite suffice too much to uh, kill. Oh, However, gets Kyrie. this is going to be something. The Delar is just going to be jumping himself right in the face of Kyrie. The appraisal's wrap did manage to connect, but Delar is still going to be A-OK, -okay, and we know for a fact that he will regenerate back. But we do have Sans coming in from behind with a feather as right. More than enough, Kyrie still takes the turtle right now. Sans just going to be jumping right in with the decimate that kills Boots. Honestly, that was, I would say, as good as they could do it for uh, EVOS. But again, a very good engage coming in from Keyboy and Taz. Wow, low HP. It's very greedy from the side of Taz, especially since there wasn't much people that could open up the map for Taz and helping them realize that, hey, the orange buff is going to be taken down, or rather the orange buff, someone is going to go over to the orange buff. In the meantime, it does seem like Kyrie did manage to bring the orange buff down. Keyboy and Kyrie oh. is running for their dear life. The and the Kyrie. takes his very first kill that in was MSC 2023. One of, one of the longest tag uh, skirmishes <laughs> that we've seen, just because of the fact that it was the, it was the Uranus, and uh, Kyrie really overstayed there. Was yeah. able to successfully get the turtle and the orange buff. That was great. Great place, but Dilar was there oh, to punish. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, what? I mean, something happened, each may die. Yep. I mean, do one, two, and a, and a profit. But either ways, right now on the top side, Taz is here. I kind of feel like you can't really take quite a lot of advantage here in the EXP just yet because even though Boots isn't winning, Boots isn't really losing as well. I think this is the point in time where the ESP yeah, is just right. so so equal and 50-50. Even if the Lai is winning against Boots, it, it just takes so little for Boots to come back in this game. You just need one person, hit himself up to the top lane, push Boots uh, push the Lai away, and they're back to equal. I kind of get what you are coming from, but oh. looks like there's a clash. Keyboy, bouncing ball. In the meantime, suppressed in, and Keyboy is not in a good spot at all. The entirety of Evos collapses themselves and yep. brings the front line down. I, I would have said that uh, it was Taz who's suffering. Even when uh, like Dilar as well as Brent's having a great time, Taz will be the one suffering. Now he gets two kills. He still is a level behind Kyrie, which means that uh, Frederick will be snowballing out of control when it comes to taking down those neutral objectives. But overall, there has something to there, something has to be done for Taz. Not only when it comes to the kills, they need to really make sure that they get the. Probably the third turtle in the first Lord. That's how they should be winning this game. Though he may technically be a level behind, or rather a few EXP behind, I'm pretty sure that his itemization is a lot on the line. But in the meantime, he has Keyboy jumping in. He did manage to connect on the Dream as but Kyrie for now takes the turtle for his own. The La gets himself away, and the entirety of Evos actually went in for business and went out. Yeah, looking at the situation just now, Dream's user and Dream, but he does not have his ultimate up because at this point, I kind of feel like Evos, they kind of want to move proactively. But even if Kaja does catch someone, looking at the damage, I kind of feel like if it's just two person there, including the Kaja, they won't have enough damage. But four people here, they might be able to do something. Dream's just got his uh, his ult, but the thing is, still doesn't have the flicker. Oh. 
you can see that the, already, you can see the strength of the, the Fredrin that like he's able to really tank up. And whenever he gets the first turtle, he's really a massive boost to the farm attack ability of a Fredrin. Oh, too Zan, early. Just a sliver, runs himself away and pops off the defender aspect for a little while longer. Kyrie, with the appraisal's wrath, he will be able to bring Taz down. I don't know whether Taz had the orange buff or not at that point, but I was so low. Sans yep. should have died, but Steel was able to run away. And just an interesting point that I got to give over to, to Wolf mm -hmm. now. The Lar, he's not building the Enchanted Talisman first. Oh, oh yeah, true. he's building the Oracle, Oracle first, meaning first. he's going straight for defense. Yep. He knows that he needs to tag up against the Joy. Somebody has to take care of business. So you have a little bit of uh, damage mitigation for magic from oh, the Oracle. Yes. Of course, that's uh, Farsa as well as the Joy is going to be a problem later on. Okay. Then you go to Talisman afterwards. Best of both worlds, huh? You're able to sustain for extended team fight, And of course, you're going to be A-OK -okay with Sans and Blue. Yep. I like that. 100%. Right now, looking at the bottom lane. T-Boy is charging up. Oh. Dreams catches him. Dreams immediately brings CW down while Keyboy was looking to try to bring down the bottom oh. lane. Keyboy great power of break. Slam three buttons right over to the wall. And the rest of Onyx follows by. Oh. Sans almost managed to help to bring Dreams down. Oh, but Cass is here with the first testament to connect down onto the front end. Keyboy jumps himself right within the range of the turret and he's going to be A-OK. -okay. A lot happened, but I got to say, man, perfect timing yep. by Keyboy. He knows, like, OK, you guys are going to be recovered in three, two, wow. one, mm -hmm. clap back. That was, uh, there's just a lot of micro things that happen in there. First, uh, the jump coming out from the Kaja that was Dreams, that was immediately piled up by Bennett's Rage, and uh, he was able to pull back his target, which was Chewe, to multiple bumps from the grenade, from the Bennett. That's why he's able to kill him off. Then afterwards, when the Cult Arter was activated, you know that you get suppressed, right? You get stunned when the, the shields are up. So Kyrie just popped the ultimate, and immediately, you know, effectively stunning up three heroes that set up for that, that, that uh, Kufra. Keyboy. Big old catch, Keyboy. They're trying to go for it, but no, no one else was really around that to follow up. Oh, and Kyrie was able to retreat that gold crab away. Mm -hmm. So, small win, but you know what? Any kind of win, you're just going to be appreciative of it. Right now, let's look at the items. Anything we should be uh, thinking about yeah. here. Okay, so, yeah, you mentioned the Oracle. There is an upcoming Dominance Ice for Dilar, which kind of deals with the 1-1, one -one, which is much needed. And on the opposite end, some just uh, casual items from the Kufra so that he's being able to last up against the Mardi. Right now, Dilar is deep into enemy territory. Looks like he's just getting uh, vision a little bit. So far, looking at the mana pool, he should be able to handle uh, Boots quite well. Speaking of which, Boots and Dilar, not winning, not losing, both EXP laners, they're just kind of like doing their job, fighting their own time. It's a very equal fight, right? We're looking at both teams pretty much hanging on the knife's edge. Anything that will happen, it will eventually erupt. Now, looks like uh, Evos tried to catch Keyboy off guard. Took a little bit of damage. And so far, Keyboy, he is going to be the linchpin. Kyrie goes in, finds Hijume. The front didn't really quite connect on the Hijume, though. Forced him to went off with the Cult's altar. Oh, what a good go ahead play coming out from Kyrie, utilizing the retribution, knowing that the the, Lord, the the next objective will be about 20 seconds away, so it will be cooling down for sure. What he did was to force out the Cult altar just because of one hey micro play. Didn't really quite connect with Tyrant's Revenge, though. Did you mean was looking for a small little happening, but it doesn't seem like he would want to go in anytime soon. But Sans My finds God. something, and that is a Feathered Airstrike. They actually managed to strip down the Hijumi and Brands more than enough to force them away. This is a smaller priority that they can have. I oh. gotta say, man, he was, they gotta slow things down because Hijumi needs a bit of time to come back to the Lord fight. But right now, E-Boy, Dalar is there. E-Boy doesn't want to go for Dalar just yet. Oh, that's, that's crucial. They lost control of the Lord, but now he Jomei, his ultimate is cooling down. And now, looking at the Lord, about half HP, Kyrie as well as Taz is both there. The Lord soaking a lot of damage, Dreams tries to find any angle that he can get. And now Keyboy is just there, Brand from back, the Lord's so low, Brand oh. secures it! It doesn't seem like Brand will go down anytime soon because with him getting it as the Lord is gonna be big! And for now, Oni continues to power through and power through! Hijumi and Taz did go down, but the oh, Lord boost. is still gonna be working for themselves! Boots are gonna be crawling in! The proxy helps them bring Taz down as well as the first tier turret! 
Oh, what a jump coming out from the entirety of Onik. But even better was the ultimate coming out from Keyboy once again. This time, he didn't have any sort of help or setup. It's just literally the melee based comp that you saw coming out from Evos getting punished by the Cobra. Still, Brands secures the Lord, and that's massive for Evos. But then again, Kyrie. Ever so efficient, steals an orange buff up top. Yeah, I, I gotta say, man, that was crazy. I would say the play came from both gold laners, man. Brand secures the Lord, CW secures two kills for himself. Mm. And the thing is, they gotta find a way to make sure that Brands is all right. Sand so far yeah. has not died. And again, this Farsa deals a lot of damage, I even agree. though sure, very soft. They gotta make sure that Brands is taken care of. As long as Brands is fine, he should be okay. He died twice, Dreams hasn't died at all. I ah, definitely agree. I think that style of the fight, you saw how much damage he's already able to deal. And that's uh, also a way to break the formation that you are seeing from Evos. But the fact of the matter remains, taking the Lord means that you will eventually get a lot of pushing potential. And that is going to be the economy equalizing for both teams. Right now, Taz was able to secure a orange buff for himself as well. Level 13 on both junglers. Brands level 11, CW level 12. Hijume right now, I kind of think in terms of items, he should be doing quite well. But the thing is, Keyboy as well as Kyrie is putting up so much space between them as well as CW and Sans, making it quite, I would say, quite safe for CW to move forward. I just want to say though, Keyboy is... Uh very tanky now. Radiant armor as well as the dominance size just really picked up. Uh, we can see that he is, uh, he, he knows that correct items. Where you're looking at his counterpart, it's the Kaja. It's, uh, he's about, what, 600 gold richer? But interestingly, not able to uh, complete yeah. an item right because now of those casual items. Yeah, here, here's the thing. I kind of feel like Dreams right now, not dying, kind of feels quite well if he wants to go for that fleeting time. Looking at Brands, he's probably going for a Hunter Strike soon. He has a lot of penetration. So in terms of damage, it's kind of looking quite good. But again, you can have all the damage in the world, but if you die, it kind of doesn't matter. Oh, it's going to be a very important second Lord. And I guess that whoever takes this next Lord and then wins the fight will inflate their lead to about 5,000. Now, one thing that we're going to have to reconsider and remember is the fact that EVOS did manage to pull off getting themselves the first Lord, and that was no fluke. EVOS have timed their retribution between Tassadon and Brands. Brands wanted to go for the, uh, um, the snipe onto the Lord at the same time of Taz going for the retribution. And we can more or less prepare for something like that to happen again. As such, Onyx maybe should keep an eye out for where exactly this Beatrix is. Right now, I'm actually looking at the map. Sans is coming back into the fight. The Lara is coming in. Keyboy is looking for an angle. The Lord is very low. Taz is alone. Everyone else is far away. The Lara is gonna flank from behind. 11,000 HP left on the Lord. Looks like no one wants to commit just yet. They really want to make sure someone dies first. 8,000 HP on the Lord. And, and now, this is going to be a finesse race. Plus, it will pass it on to the Lord. And Taz will eventually be able to get the Lord down. But unfortunately, throughout all of that, the Lord is still going to be taken down to the hands of Onik. Oh, Hijumi goes down too. Onik found value after yep. taking the Lord. Yeah, a massive snag coming out from uh, Onik for sure. Especially with the ultimate coming out from Keyboy stopping the Lara and Strax already committing the Purify. But then again, the, that's the idea coming out from Onik. Wow, okay, Kyrie, yeah. using the taunt to his... Uh, but you, you, you talked about the purify. Hijumi didn't yeah. use his. Yeah. I saw quite a bunch of uh, crowd control on yeah. him. I kind of feel like Hijumi should not have died just now. Well, he knows that he will have the passive anyways. He's going to trigger it. It's not worth to commit your purify. Through the instant replay, you're going to see the go-ahead usage of the Bennett's Rage. But Dilar was isolated. You can see Keyboy with the, no the knockback. Utilizing his ultimate, and they were just fine not giving away the Lord to the side of Onyx. So it's pretty much a, an even trade-off between two teams. And honestly, looking back into the highlights, everyone else was going away except for Hijume. So maybe there is some kind of a communication, uh, yeah, thing? communication issue there. Yeah, they gotta fix that up because yeah. Hijume, he has to know he is the mid laner. Yeah, he can deal the damage, but again you got to make sure that you're yeah. in the right position to actually hit your Ghost yep. Blisters onto multiple targets. I guess the, the, the call for, uh, for 
for Evos was hit and run. Let's just get the retribution. Let's get out afterwards. Knowing full well that there's some massive engage comp that you can see and expect from Onik. Evos, they're far too afraid to commit 5v5 versus Onik unless it's just for the sake of getting the retribution onto the Lord. Right now, looking at the positions of everyone, Dolar is solo up on top while the other four members of Evos somewhere here down by. Dreams now has the Athena Shield should be able to handle the damage coming in from Sans. Sans so far again has not died just yet doing absolutely quite a lot of damage onto EVOS. I gotta say guys, during this entire fray, during minute number one up until minute 15, the start of the game, 7,000 gold leads. Yep. But after that, I, I would say, not even a 1,000 difference between both teams. Yep, I definitely agree. And big props to, to Onik, alleviating 7,000 gold in just the first few minutes of the game. Amazing. Yeah, Amazing. It, it, it all boils down to the first buff, huh? Eventually, once yep. you get the first buff, the, the lead is just so much. But in all seriousness, one thing that I'm looking at from the side of Onyx is the fact that they are pretty much more or less going for like a wombo combo, unga bunga kind of game, right? While Evos, the main thing and the main way that they have been playing is really just Sand Dream as with a flicker, followed by pulling and picking uh, picking off someone. From that point on, hopefully that they will be able to get that numbers advantage in order to win in the team fight. And not to forget, with the insurance from Hijumi, I thought that that would have worked well. And I kind of feel like both teams are trying to see who's going to make the mistake. Ooh. CW is getting sniped quite a few times already by Brands. Brands so far has been pretty good on those snipes. Lord Spawn, Eva so far has been able to secure two for themselves. Can they make it a three? Or this time, Onyx is going to make sure that they get it. Looking at Dolar, he is inside the base of Onyx. And Keyboy jumps himself right onto the front lines. Taz seems to be in a bit deep trouble as Boots puts himself right onto Hijumi. Brands all the way behind, trying to go for the snipe, but unfortunately, that's not going to work out for them this time. Lane. For the first time, Onyx gets himself the Lord, but the Law is all the way down in the bottom lane, pushing the wave all the way through. In the meantime, we're looking at two way role play. We're looking at two fights. Well, the main thing is CW falls oh. into the sky, takes two down, and Brands pop off with the wind on nature, CW pops up, pops his own one and tries to follow through. CW wanted to say, I'm the king of the skies, mm -hmm. man. Kyrie's on my team, sure, but look at me. <laughs> oh man, massive split from Dillard, but it will not be the enough. Does complete the push onto the bottom lane, but now with Onik getting the Lord and winning the battle afterwards, there's not much wave that they have, and now they can come and trade off easily. Right now, looking at how the waves are moving, Onik now has a 2,000 goal lead. The Lord is still marching in. In the mid, Hijume is trying to protect his own base, his own turret. Now, Evos, I kind of feel like they can protect this, but they took quite a heavy hit. 100%. I mean, Onik will lose their bottom lane, but the fact that there still is a Lord, that a lot of big minions march in, Onik still has oh. map control. And then, oh, it goes forward. Oh. In the end of the day, Sands is still managed to get a kill with a magic warship onto Brand. And that is more than enough for them to bring the one win con down. Dude, that must oh. hurt, man. We haven't seen Farsa in quite a while, but the thing about a Farsa is all you gotta do is one job. Yep. Drop the marksman. Raw damage. That's what we want for the side of Onyx. And speaking of raw damage, look at the amount of damage that they can deal onto the last. Despite the fact that he is really tanky, they still kept bringing down the Lord. So such a low percentile of health. Onyx forces their objective and push them their push their way through. Brand is nowhere to be seen, and this is one of the best opportunities for Onyx to make a play without the main damage dealer from the side of Evos. As such, Kairi makes himself the front, and he's just wanting to get himself right in the middle. But unfortunately, the immortality will be popped. Brand joins in the frame, and Onyx finds this time to run Ooh. away. But Dreams, he knew that, is, that this moment will come. With a flicker, he brings one. Okay. Onyx looked like they overstayed their welcome Definitely. There. They, they've already pushed out three lanes of terrorists. He should be happy with that, especially knowing that Brands' timing is going to be cooling down, you know, he's going to be respawning. The fact that Kyrie stayed in front of that base building also forces all his immortality, which, by the way, is a mortal sin in that portion of the game. It's, you know, it's a very, a very valuable cooldown to not have. And then Brands was able to respawn, and there's the assist coming up from Dreams. Still, Onyx massively, map control is theirs. Not impossible for Evos, though. At this point, everyone is almost full build. I see Hijime not full build just yet. I kind of feel like after this, he will go for the Blood Wings. Lord coming up in just a bit. And this time, Evos, even though they are at a goal deficit, 
they're they're in prime position to secure the Lord. And again, at this point, it kind of doesn't matter when, about the gold. This Lord is looking to be very scary. As Oni can literally take this Lord to fight. This Lord stands by the throat of evils. Right now, looking at the Lord. Kyrie is pulling it towards the side of Onik. Dreams. Will you have a good position? T-Boy is looking for a target. He finds Dreams. And immediately slams him into the wall. Hijumi came in to give him the insurance policy. Dream has, is still alive. However, the law is not. He's going to be popping off the immortality. And immediately with the Wallach Intro Winter Truncheon, he's cool. he could have stayed alive. But expended off his immortality just so that he will be able to go for the trade onto Dreams. This means that there's only oh. three members left there's on the side one. of Evos. There's only one play left. That's the bottom. Taz sees it. Taz. Is anybody from oh. Onik gonna play? They cancelled the, the TP. Oh no, that they have boots anyways. They have boots. So now, Onik, prime position to end the game at around 21, 22 minutes. For now, Evos, their damage dealers, haven't been able to do quite a lot. That haven't was, been able to do too much. That was really a tough fight, isn't it, for Evos? Because in a macro, in, in, in a macro sense, there's so many things going on. They're gonna have to take note of the top lane, middle lane, and the bottom lane, which will eventually push in, especially for the top and the middle, right? Because if the longer that they keep this fight going, the longer that they hold on to this Lord, unfortunately, Evos will be on the choke uh, on the chokehold. They can't dance around the Lord for that much. They need to deploy someone to defend the base. Well, right now the Lord is marching in. Sans trying to find a good position to make sure that he can get onto Brands. Brands is still alive. He will be trying to clear the minions. The Lord comes in. Better as right use. And does seem as though Taz was hoping that he'll be able to get a kill down the sand, but the rest of the members from the side of Oni will probably want to focus down the floor. But the Lord is free, he's frozen. He don't care about much at all. But the main front line of Onyx, it kind of seems as though we've got Kyrie taken down, but it's oh, quite a lot of trade. Dream, Taz, the law, all of them taken down. T Boy, back line, but they don't care. Looks like now, match point for Onyx. The Lord comes in. Honestly, quite a good change. He was looking pretty good, but not good enough. Mako wasn't there, unfortunately. During the important Lord team fights, they lost control of the map. Kyrie was able to get it. They were poked down. Dilar wanted to go for that split push play. Was successful in doing so. But in the end, the entirety of the, his gang wasn't able to secure the Lord. Still, the 1-1 one -one is pretty strong, I would say. And the fact that Boots was making it so impossible for the backliners of EVOS to get into position, that was another problem that they had to solve. I gotta have to say though, I really do commend the fact that EVOS constantly tries to drag onto the game and get themselves more time. Buy more time to eventually find the small little weakness that Onyx has. Because here's the thing, I've always seen EVOS as a very slow team. They will always start off the series in a very slow manner. They will, will always give their opponent the first point and eventually they bounce back. So more or less, EVOS is still keeping to their MO. They're giving two games over to Onyx and you wouldn't be too surprised. I wouldn't be too surprised if EVOS somehow finds a way to turn the game around. Yeah, I kind of feel like game number three, because again, it's not over. It is a best of five. Looking at how they were playing just now, CW, Honestly, in my personal opinion, played out of his mind. Brands, I kind of feel like he did well as well, but yep. again, always targeted. I'm going to bring in Leo into this conversation. That was an amazing game, Leo. We can only really do so much as hope, all right? We were definitely taking in our dosage of copium and hopium when <laughs> Dilar came in. But again, the question stood. Will his macro stand up to the fact that he's a new part of this equation? And we saw some signs of the old Dilar, right? We yep. saw how even when everything is up against Evos's odds, yep. he tried to push that bottom lane. He oh. really did. And I don't know, is it just me or is the mid game something that Evos really just let go of somehow? Somehow, somehow? Honestly, I kind of feel like it's, it's all on on it because we're going to look at the MVP for now. And the MVP of this game is going over to Signs. Where again, we got to remember, in MSE, 0% win rate, Sans just changed that. And the thing is, Sans and Boots, like, we got to bring up Boots again. He's a pretty cool guy. He's a pretty nice guy. He makes sure that everyone stays careful. But in this game, he keeps telling Brands to be careful because Sans and Boots always mm -hmm. making it so that, yo, you know what, Brands? Maybe you could you could uh, relax here. Yep. Don't be close to the fight. I love the fact that there was an important 
important pickoff coming out from Sans. Didn't go for the mystery shop. It was really playing really passively, but at the same time, he's on point with the ultimate. He used the flicker so that he's able to eliminate Brands. Yep. And that actually gave so much of a push for the side of Onyx. We are going to see highlights once again. Important, important internal team fights, but Brands were, but sorry, but Taz was able to get two kills. Great start. You see Keyboy with the, the counter play. Oh, that was beautiful. That's nasty. That was nasty. And it was started because of the count altar that expired. Now, here's the thing. Whenever we are looking at the initiation coming from EVOS, the main thing that we want to grab on is the front, the first person in front. Most of the time, it's Kyrie. Most, uh, the other time, it's CW if the opportunity presents itself. Otherwise, Sans would never be caught. So right now, the main idea is that Sans has got free real estate. As long as he's in the, in the safe place, he will have all the free uh, feathered airstrikes. Yeah. He can deal as much damage as he can. And the main problem about Farsa uh, right now is the fact that everyone can deny him, everyone can stop his ultimate, but in this game, not much. It's only this one time where Taz actually managed to find that knockup onto, uh, onto Sans, where yeah. there's not a that much value to be made. Oh man, look at Sans is just like a like a menace against the against the against brands. It's, it's, he seems like a coach chef as well as coach Achil or Adi. Just you know, give him one task to do today. Make it so that brands will not be able to play. Don't and let brands play. That's and he did, he did it. He did it. He set it up right. Uh, mm -hmm. If there would be a secondary MVP, I'd say it would be Chewe. Mm -hmm. But that's a completely payoff type of MVP. Sans was both. Sans helped yep. set up amazing team fights for Onik, and he had a great yep. pop-off from the mid to the late game. Let's look at the items here. Uh, this was a relatively long match. Again, 22 minutes, there was a clap back. There was a time wherein Onik said, you know what, it's our turn, yep. we're gonna win. But just the same, Evos built up. Evos had a good solid ramp up to the mid game. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I feel a lot, a lot of people will be critical on to brands, but in that kind of game, it's very hard for him as a marksman to position really well to the point where I kind of feel like you've been kiting a lot. Yep. W would it be crazy to say, might as well just go for it, flicker for it, and try to kill them before they kill you? Because I kind of feel like at this point, Brands is trying to avoid a lot of the damage. Which again, that's your initial instinct. Is yep. this one of those situations, might as well just like, I don't care, I'm going to go in and I'm, I'm going to yep. try to kill everybody. I, I know a gold dealer who would do that. And uh, he's called the gold starter in the Philippines. He's not afraid to go flicker in. And he knows his timings, right? But then again, if you're going to be looking at the composition of Onyx, it's kind of hard to do. There is an opening, though. Once the once the Joy already went to the back lines, and of course, uh -huh. Sans already used the ultimate, maybe you can go and flicker in. This is also a, a, a dilemma between like a, you know picking up Thermis. Sometimes it will go badly for you. Because once you receive that ultimate, it seems like your enemy will have a free stun. All they have to do is to pop the uh, the feather there strike and then land it to yeah. the extra shields, and you're gonna be stunned up. Maybe that's the reason why Brands does not go for that kind of flicker play, because he will be really susceptible with that one second stun. That's a theory, though. And actually, the way Evos approached it is they 